Hawke's Drift, one of the most famous battles ever fought by the British Army. In a recent video, I looked at the life and career of Lieutenant John Chard VC, who commanded the post. Today, we meet his right-hand man, Lieutenant Gonville Bromhead, which is actually pronounced Brumhead. He was the man played by Michael Caine in the film Zulu. But who was Bromhead? What had he done in his career before the battle and what happened to him afterwards? If you like the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps to grow the channel and allow more people to find it and learn about Britain's amazing military history. Bromhead, or Brumhead, was born in Versailles, France, in August 1845. His was a military family, and he had big boots to fill. His great-grandfather had served under Wolfe at Quebec, and his dad had fought at the Battle of Waterloo. Bromhead, though, grew up in Lincolnshire, and in April 1867 he purchased a commission into the 2nd Battalion, 24th Regiment of Foot. In the army, he was soon nicknamed Gunny by his fellow officers, and excelled at sport representing the regiment of boxing, wrestling and cricket. Popular with the men, he was soon promoted to lieutenant, a rank he still held when the battalion was sent to South Africa in 1878. One issue worth noting, though, was that Bromhead or Brumhead's hearing was steadily deteriorating by this time. Although it seems he was still perfectly capable of doing his duty, it may have undermined his confidence. He and his unit, the 2nd Battalion of the 24th, then served in the 9th Cape Frontier War against the Xhosa people. And it was during a skirmish with the enemy that the commander of B Company, his name was Captain Godwin Austin, was accidentally shot and wounded by one of his own men. He was sent back to England to recover, and the command of the company passed to Goni. At the start of the invasion of Zululand in January 1879, B Company were tasked with defending the small mission station on the border, which was now a store and a hospital. They were also to defend the nearby ponts across the Buffalo River. If you want to hear the full story of the Battle of Rourke's Drift, where around 140 British soldiers fought off an assault by 4,000 Zulus, then please listen to my podcast episode about the battle, which I'll link in the notes below. I also did a video tour of the site, which I'll also link. It's an epic tale. You may only know it from the story of the classic film Zulu. While that is an extraordinary piece of cinema, it certainly does not stick to the facts. But anyway, I digress, as usual, when I talk about Rourke's Drift. I think that might be a subject for a future video. For his leadership and courage in the ensuing fight, Bromhead was awarded the Victoria Cross, Britain's most prestigious medal. While in my opinion his award was well deserved, Goni did have his detractors. One of his contemporaries, Major Francis Clary, wrote of him, Bromhead is a capital fellow at everything except soldiering. While Lieutenant Henry Curlin said in a letter home, It's very amusing to read the accounts of Chard and Bromhead. Bromhead is a stupid old fellow as deaf as a post. Is it not curious how some men are forced into notoriety? I suspect there may be a touch of jealousy in these comments, but like Lieutenant Chard, I think it's fair to say that Bromhead wouldn't have been destined for fame or a glorious career without the look of being at the Battle of Rourke's Drift. After the battle, Bromhead and B Company remained at the mission station, helping to reinforce the defences in case of another Zulu attack. It was a miserable place, packed with demoralised soldiers who soon began to fall ill. As the history of the 24th Regiment says, The privations to which the officers and men were subject were at first very great. The battalion had nothing but what it stood in. There were no tents, no covering of any sort. All they had to shelter them from the cold sleet and rain that fell nightly, converting the enclosed space into wet mud, was their thin, cursy frocks. To make matters worse, the medicines, having been burnt with the hospital, all that remained at the disposal of the medical officers then and for some times afterwards was contained in the small field companions they carried with them. After the battle, Brumhead was quickly promoted to captain and soon afterwards became brevet major. Then on the 2nd of May, his Victoria Cross award was announced. His citation said, the Lieutenant General commanding the troops reports that, had it not been for the fine example and excellent behaviour of these two officers, it means Chard and Bromhead, 
Under the most trying circumstances, the defence of Rourke's drift post would not have been conducted with the intelligence and tenacity which so essentially characterised it. The Lieutenant General adds that its success must in a great degree be attributable to the two young officers who exercised the chief command on the occasion in question. Fame didn't suit Brumhead. He wasn't a man who wished to share his story. As Major Cleary said, I was about a month with him at Rourke's Drift after his Andwana, and the height of his enjoyment seemed to be to sit all day on a stone on the ground smoking a most uninviting looking pipe. The only thing that seemed equal to moving him in any way was any allusion to the defence of Rourke's Drift. This had a sort of electrical effect on him, for he would jump up and off he would go, and not a word could be gotten out of him. Brumhead and the rest of B Company didn't fight again during the war. Brumhead did though later command Sir Gon at Wolseley's special escort when he took over command of the British forces from Lord Chelmsford towards the end of the war. At the close of hostilities, Brumhead returned to England. Alongside Chard, he was invited to dinner with the Queen at Balmoral, but was busy fishing in Ireland and received the invitation too late to attend. I think that kind of encapsulates his look in later life. Brumhead, he didn't really manage to maximise what he had achieved. The regiment went to Gibraltar and then shortly afterwards to India, though he then returned to England to attend the School of Musketry. He had time to fight in one more conflict, when in 1886 the 2nd Battalion of the 24th, which was now known at this point as the South Wales Borderers, embarked for Rangoon and took part in the Third Anglo-Burmese War. I haven't been able to find any reference to Major Brumhead's service in this conflict, which is a shame as I think it would be interesting to know how he performed and whether Rourke's Drift was a one-off for him. Interestingly, his brother, who is now Colonel Charles Brumhead of the same regiment, does get a few mentions in the history books for his part in the war. Anyway, things went downhill and shortly afterwards on the 7th of February 1891 at Allahabad in northern India, Major Gonville Gunny Bromhead VC succumbed to an attack of typhoid fever. The following message was received from the Commander-in-Chief to the regiment. Please let all ranks of the South Wales borderers know how much the Chief sympathises with them in the loss of Major Bromhead VC, who behaved with such conspicuous gallantry at Rourke's Drift and so well supported the reputation of his distinguished regiment. And so it was, it was kind of an anticlimactic, sad ending for Bromhead. He's now buried at, buried at New Cantonment Cemetery in Allahabad. I really hope to get there one day to pay my respects. If I do, I'll be sure to make a video and post pictures for you guys. You know, there's something almost a little bit sad about Bromhead. He, ne he was never able to build on his moment in the spotlight. When he died, he left his valuables, including his VC, to his brother Charles. His Victoria Cross is now held at the Museum of the Royal Welsh at Brecon. Well, that's all for today, guys. I hope you found that interesting. In the next episode, I'll be talking about the life of one of the unsung heroes of Rourke's Drift, James Langley Dalton. Hopefully, I'll have that ready by next Friday. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. All right, guys. See you then.